Welcome back to the Rules of Engagement. We just talked a little bit about how Partying First Sen, Game 1 on Cloud Kingdom opened up, about Sen going for that mid-game composition using Swarmhost Hydralis, Partying Macarena aggressively, and even taking a very fast fourth base uh, that, of course, he could sacrifice if Vibe was going no Econ. Now we're going to talk about a couple things as this game evolves. And the first thing I want to talk about uh, is basically how Swarm Hosts operate. And as a Protoss player, how you play against Swarm Hosts. Because Swarm Hosts are a unit that's very, very new to, to StarCraft 2. I mean, uh, in, in Heart of the Swarm. In, Bru in Wings of Liberty, excuse me, the longest range unit in the game with a Siege Tank with a range 13. But now all of a sudden, these Swarm Hosts, they can basically shoot across half of most maps, or more like a third of most maps. So it's a whole new basically an uh, aspect in the game where units can really come uh, out from anywhere. Then we're going to talk about late game Protoss compositions and, and, and kind of the way Parting guides his unit structure as he's going into the late game. Then we're going to talk about using Vipers uh, because Vipers are a really awesome Zerg unit that you pretty much always want to get uh, against everything and, and basically how you use them versus different compositions. Obviously, the, the quantity of Vipers you, 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 you would get is, is variable. Uh, but let's jump into this replay now and talk about playing against Swarm Host from Partying's perspective. So we can see here at the 1230 mark, where's Partying, where Partying is at right now. So he's trying to get this fourth base up, right? And he's going, of course, three attack, Stalker, Colossi army is the bulk of his army. Now, the one thing that, that's pretty important to realize is that in Wings of Liberty, as a Protoss player, this is not an army you can feel comfortable with moving on the map. Uh, you know, he's been using his force fields in some skirmishes earlier in the, earlier in the game. He's only got one, uh, he's only got a single Colossus and, and he has no range on it. If Roaches and Hydra struck him from multiple angles here, of course he's got really great scouting. So uh, it's unlikely to get flanked out of nowhere. But, you know, Roaches are still with speed, could run down this army, and he'd be in trouble. But if his opponent makes enough Roaches to do that, he says, I win. I'm, I'm, I'm happy, I recall out, and you've made a whole lot of Roaches, which will make you weaker as, as the game progresses because my composition is great against Roaches. So he can move out kind of aggressively like this. And at this point, uh, I, he hasn't 100% seen Swarmhost, but he suspects it given that infestation pit he scouted several minutes ago and given the fact that it's pretty common in Zerg play nowadays. So what you want to do here from parting, he's thinking, okay, I want to poke to see what he's doing, and I'm also worried he might be going Swarmhost. I need to keep this fourth base alive. Now, one thing that's very important for Parting is that uh, he wants to keep the Swarm Host out of range of his expansion, right? Uh, because uh, as he's going forward here, right, if he runs into a Locust Wave and it's, it's too scary to engage without taking significant losses, he can back away, right, if he's out here. If he runs into a Locust Wave and he's back here and he backs away, he loses this fourth base. So it's very important he keeps basically pushed out this far and keeps those the, any potential locusts away from uh, his expansions. And the first important part about doing that is, is as a Protoss player, you have to realize the range of locusts and basically where you have to make sure they can't be. So let's say uh, this is Cloud Kingdom. The key base, the most vulnerable base that you have is going to be your fourth base right here, right? Well, this thing's not, not listening to me right now, but we're going to jump back into the uh, StarCraft. And the key base you want to defend is this fourth base that's right here, right, over in this section. And then if you want to defend this base here, what you need to do is make sure swarm hosts don't get on this ridge. Because this zone right here, and you can make like a line along this ridge, uh, in swarm hosts that are basically right here, they can siege your base over here. And the locust will get there, and it'll still be have enough time to do significant damage. So you need to keep the Zerg player off this ridge. And then, of course, the other thing is you want to keep the Zerg player off of this ridge as well, because from here they can still hit your natural, or even from here they can still hit your natural, or from here they can hit your... Basically, you can't let Swarm Host anywhere on the middle ridge on Cloud Kingdom, or else you're going to be start taking damage, and the damage won't stop. Um, if you have to, you can retreat that far, but then you have to be able to really quickly retake that ridge. So he wants to stay offensive. But not only is it very important that he, he basically keeps poking up here and making sure Sen can't push his Swarm Host out, but it's also important, look what he's doing on the right side. One, one Observer and a Cell just cleared up all the creep on this ridge over here. And that was a definitely a mistake by Sen letting all that be cleaned up without saying a couple of roaches there. But the reason why this is so important, creep is always important for the Zerg unit speed, right? As we can see here, you select the Zerg unit. On creep, its movement speed is increased considerably. And in fact, most units is basically one third faster, right? It increases that speed uh, uh, by, by a significant amount. 
But what's very important is with Locust. Because not only does the creep increase the speed of a Locust, but because it increases the speed, that also increases the range at which they're effective. So uh, if Zerg can creep up the whole map, they can seed your fourth from actually below the ridge, if there's creep on the ridge. Because the Locust will cross that ridge so fast, they can get to your fourth from even, even basically where the Zerg's fourth is. So uh, very, very important as a Protoss player, y you have to have the map control. And in Wings of Liberty, you can't really do that because if you move out and the Zerg squashes your army, you lose the game. In Heart of the Swarm, you can do it because they have recall. So you got to move out on the map, stay very aggressive, keep clearing all those creep tumors, and then make sure you have that recall available in case the Zerg jumps on you. Now, you still have to be very careful that the Zerg's not going muteless. Because they're going muteless, you're kind of on the map, they hit one of your bases, you might get a recall back there, but then it'll just recall it's a few seconds, they'll just fly right to your other base, and you're going to lose a lot of probes there. So, uh, good scouting information, if they're not going muteless, be assertive on the map, unless they're maxed out in roaches, and then, of course, you'll learn... You'll, You'll learn your lesson once and recall back, then you'll just stay back and have a few more classes. So uh, what you do in party here is you stay very aggressive, keep the creep back to reduce the locust range, keep the swarm host back so that uh, if you run into a wave that you don't want to handle, you can easily retreat from that wave. So going forward here, you're going to push uh, over at the Zerg's fourth base, killing more creep. You see the locust, you're like, okay, I'm just going to you know, try to back away here. You see the roaches and hydras coming at you, you're like, oh, oh crap, I'm, I'm too close to the edge of creep. I, I've got to find some way to buy myself time to get out of here, so you lay a few time warps if we have to. Uh, you're losing a few units, but you push the creep back and you're making sure the Zerg basically isn't killing you, right? You're still trading inefficiently because you always will against Swarm Host. That's just the nature of it. You're going to trade inefficiently, but you're keeping your fourth alive, right? And then eventually the Zerg hopefully will mess up and they'll leave their Swarm Host exposed. You can jump on them and get a bunch of kills. Meanwhile, of course, you're getting a higher, higher class that count. Once that count gets high, you can deal with Locust a little bit better. Uh, you're getting upgrades. And then you got to think about transitioning to the late game. Because Stalker Colossi is not going to cut it basically as soon as Zerg gets high tech, which normally would be right about now. Uh, Send decided to delay his high tech for a very, very long time. So Parting has a lot more time to work with this composition. But normally, basically, as soon as they get Hive Tech, you got to start adding in your, your extra units or else those Vipers are really going to tear this competition apart as long as Zerg has a decent army to supplement it as well. So going forward here, you're thinking about Prodos. What type of late game composition does he want? He's been able to establish a fourth base very fast. Remember, he started his fourth base at the 11 minute mark. This Nexus is being thrown down here. So he has a very, very great economy, although he, he should be mining his gases a little bit faster. Even taking the fifth base now. And he can do that because he has all this map presence. He keeps... Keeping the Zerg pushed back here, using Blink Micro so he's taking very little unit losses. Uh, Corruptors can't really get anything done. And then even on the right side, Zelt Harass, uh, he has a, um, you know, more Colossi coming out. Fifth base, very soon he'll be on 10 gas. Right now he's actually still on 6 because he's just a little bit of oversight there with the gas mining. But now he's thinking, what do I go for going for the late game? And so the one thing that everyone talks about is the late game Protoss airplay. Now, uh, once you have enough economy to, to afford to build these the, the late game air units, wow, you can still keep the Zerg on a defensive. Wow, you can deny the Zerg some, some extra corner bases and uh, basically have enough gas from taking all, all your gases over here. Oh, he still isn't taking that one. So you can get all the upgrades for the air, keep going to upgrades on the ground, keep your ground presence active, then it's a great idea. Um, some players mix it in earlier, and, and if you can find the right build, you can do that. But if you want to have a lot of map presence in the mid game, you got to push that air that airplay back to late game, but you do eventually want to get it because Protoss air units are their strength. They're like the ultimate Protoss units. So while you're trying to get the air army up and, and, and get the, you know, the double upgrades up and, of course, upgrading in the Cybernex core as well, what you want to do is you want to buy time, and the best way to buy time is by distracting the Zerg with War Prism play. So you, you keep using, you know, you use your mobile ground army here, and if it looks like it's in danger, you can back away, you've got force fields and blinks, so you're pretty safe. Uh, and then, of course, the, the warp present play as well, trying to slow the Zerg down, keep them busy until you get that transition going. Now, the one thing I would say is that, especially if you're going air, but even if you're not, as the game starts getting later in Heart of the Swarm, it's very important to get Templars. Uh, you know, Wings of Liberty, they weren't quite as important because, uh, I mean, Zerg, Zerg players, as long as they keep their infestors behind the Brood Lords, you usually want to get too many feedbacks off, and you'd rather spend that gas on. I'm basically just trying to have a high stalker counter, getting the Archons for the Vortex and Mothership tech, etc. 
But in Heart of the Swarm, the Temple are much, much, much more important because your Colossi no longer you can guarantee to do amazing damage against the ground army with the Vipers in play. So I, I would definitely recommend, you know, Parting uh, is still going for the, the Colossi Voider composition, which is very strong. Templar, though, are, are really invaluable uh, against their late game units. So now we're going to talk about uh, going back to the Zerg perspective again. So we're going to switch over to Sensu. So Protoss is going for this late game composition. And uh, for Zerg, if you're a Zerg player, the best way to deal with Protoss late game, you always want to have a few Vipers. The rest of your army is going to depend. There's a lot of different ways, ways to do it, but you always want to have a few Vipers. So the most important thing is to know how should you utilize those Vipers. And it really depends. So if you're in this situation where the Protoss army, uh, you're, you're kind of skirmishing, right? You see Sen actually walks up, then he walks back. It's like a skirmish line. Neither player is committed to an engagement. Either player can back away very easily. They're keeping the range. If it's in that situation, use Abduct to pick off their key, un key units. We can see here using Abduct on, on the Colossus right before the Viper dies, picking that off, right? And then you can just back away. Keep doing that. Keep, keep picking off all their key units. Uh, you know, even with a very small army like this, like uh, look at how many he's got. Right here he's got, um, what's this, uh, 13 roaches and 9 hydralists. The stalkers alone, right, there's 25 stalkers. The stalkers alone could beat his army, right? So he can't win disengagement here. But what he can do is he can pick off a couple of key units. He'll just be losing some of his units that aren't as important. And meanwhile, of course, uh, you know, that's not his whole army. He's got all these, it's not like his army is bad. It's because he's got all the swarmos back there. So if you're not going to commit fully to an engagement, utilize those abducts to pick off key units. As soon as you can tell here that there it was going to be a, a significant engagement, use those blinding clouds because then their units, they have to waste their blink, they have to back away, they lose a lot of their damage output, and that's what allowed him to get these corruptors out of here, get the vipers out of here, and also pick off a few more of these stalkers before his roach hydro dies. So when you're using vipers, just like we saw uh, Sendu there, we'll fast forward to the next engagement. If, if you're not committed to the battle, if they're not committed to the battle, abduct to pick off key units, right? Right here, there's no battle being committed to, just some light harass. So you use abduct, pick off their key units, right? There's one, one Colossus, two Colossus, uh, all the Colossus and now are down. So you use, use abduct there. If it's committed battle, blinding cloud is what you want to use because that, of course, you put it on the bulk of their army and that any units in that zone aren't going to be able to shoot. So uh, it basically takes out segments of their army out of the battle, which is very, very, very important. And our partner here is still trying to buy time with these Warpins because meanwhile he's building up his Death Void Ray composition in the back, trying to keep him busy at the front as well with these Stalkers. And, and, and again, you know, the Stalkers here are to keep him busy and he's got the Mothership Core, so if they, if they extend too far and they're going to be cut off, recall out of there, keeping his Zerg busy while he builds up that Death Army. And now he's like, okay, the Zerg's going to go on attack. Now I need to get my Void Rays, activate them, because uh, if I don't use the Void Rays, well, I mean, they're basically my whole army now. We've got nine Void Rays uh, over here, another another one in production. They're each four food. That's 40 food in Void Rays. I can't because he can continue the game 40 food down, so I've got to start using these. So going forward again, we're going to be in a situation where the Void Rays, uh, because he got the switch over, and all of a sudden Sen is stuck with an army that's all Roaches and Swarmos. Swarmos are caught out of guard. They're not able to summon the Locust. Void Rays have no answer because Corruptors are kind of worthless against them. Even though there's Abducts, there's actually nothing to kill the Void Rays, so Abducts don't, don't actually do too much there. And Partner gets a nice little victory here, killing off these Roaches and Swarmos. But uh, this, is, this is where Sen basically backs up. And, and, and the question is, why doesn't Parting keep pushing forward with these Void Rays? And the answer is, yes, he killed uh, Sen's, most of Sen's army. But at the same time, uh, he, lost his ro he lost the bulk of the Stalkers to those Roaches and a Swarm Host. And so he knows that the Zerg's going to have money. The Zerg's going to repop and get in repopulate units that can hit air. He knows his Mothership Core has not enough energy for a recall. Which means if he gets stuck on creep, he's going to lose everything to the Hydras that are produced uh, because they're just going to run down to Void Rays and kill them with, you know, just the mass production advantage that, that Sen has. So he's going to back up, wait for more ground support, and then engage again. Of course, the reason why Parnian wants to keep the action going, he's still in that Swarm Host mentality, right? He's still thinking, if I let Swarm Host get established and let him spread the creep and put a bunch of... I mean, if a Zerg gets, like, 20 Spore Crawlers a few spines, a bunch of swarm hosts, queens and vipers, and a few infestors like established in the middle of the map, you're, you're dead, right? There's really no, I mean, unless you can get a horde of Tempest and then even then the swarm hosts will keep the Templar back and then Tempest will just be abducted. Uh, although you can kill a lot of vipers too. So, I mean, maybe if you get like 10 Tempests, but you're not going to get that because that's too expensive. So 
He's still in that mentality where I got to keep the action so the Zerg can't get any forward position. They can't spread the creep. They can't invest. The Zerg can sit back, build minerals. They can invest in a lot of spore crawlers, which are their, their best anti-air and start moving those around. So he's keeping the action, but this is a point where there's no Swarmos anymore. And Sen has repopulated almost exclusively Hydra. So this is actually a position where it's very, very tough for Protoss to engage. And as we see here, as soon as Parting realizes what he's up against, right? If we look at this through Parting's viewpoint, as soon as he sees, he's like, oh no, that's a lot of Hydra. He's going to back up uh, and try to use some Force Fields to stay alive until these two Colossi can join the battle. And once the Colossi are in there, he's like, okay, I can deal with the Hydra now. But that's where the Vipers come back into play, is that uh, you can use a Blinding Cloud anytime there's a group of units there sent to snipe the Vipers uh, and make sure the Stalkers can't kill them. And then ideally, he'd abduct the Colossi. Too many Voyagers in the way, so he grabs those instead. Any unit that's basically more than two food. Immortals, Archons, Void Rays, Colossi, all those, just go yank them. And then you can use the speed of the, uh, speed of the Viper even when your opponent retreats. As you can see there, Vipers are faster than... Um, Actually, every, every unit that costs more than two food is slower than the Viper. So uh, you can always run down the army and pick off those key units as long as uh, you make sure that there's not too many Blink Stalkers that can pick you off as you're pursuing. And then going forward here, after you picked off all those key units that can't really be replaced, push a counterattack, uh, and, and then if there's just gateway units, your Vipers run away, the Hydras can trade even with them. The Hydras may die, but at least you're getting good trades. Uh, and, and if there's not enough gateway units, you just go kill bases. And then it, once he finds out about his top left base, he'll take that out and, and, and pretty much go on to win the game. You can see here he's up by, up by 60 food there. Um, and, and, you know, Parting is pretty much done. So what's really cool this game, uh, that, that's cool to note, is Parting got that dream composition of Colossi Void Ray in large amounts. And he was up a base for the majority of the game against Sen. So it was five base products versus four base Zerg. But because he didn't have those key Templar uh, in play, and Sen did great job using the Vipers with Blinding Clouds and Abducts to neutralize Parting's army. Uh, basically, Sen was able to win versus a high-tech Protoss army, even though it had great upgrades while he was a base down from that Viper usage. So, it, it, you know, the thing to take from this is if you're a Zerg player, always go for those Vipers. You know, Sen got him a little bit late this game. I, I'd say get him even earlier uh, because you don't really even need to get the Spire or the Corruptors unless you uh, want to go for Brood Lords later or do a, a Muta Switch. So go for those Vipers, and if you're a Protoss player, you got to use a Templar. Um, and it's not like Templar versus Vipers, it's not like Vipers are useless. Because, of course, Vipers uh, can just stay, the Vipers are faster than Templar, so they can try to move around and, and, and come in from angles where the Templar aren't uh, close enough to hit those feedbacks. And if the Templar get in the front of the army to really drive the Vipers back, then the Templar themselves are very vulnerable because they're, they're slow and low life to the other Zerg units. So it's a really interesting game, but it's very important going forward as a Protoss player Get those high Templars, you go to the late game. The Zerg player, even if they get Templars, still get Vipers. If they don't get Templar, definitely get those Vipers. As you can see here, they can let you win a game against a Protoss Death Bowl, even when you're a base down. Wraps up uh, this game number one between Party and Sen. We'll take a short break and be on to game number four. So it's a really cool game involving Party's famous Soul Train build. See you guys in a minute.